Good morning, it's Thursday the 16th of February. This is the Phoenix Blue Update brought to you this morning by Tom Colley. Yesterday we had a um, some really good strong news on CPI and retail sales out on the dollar, which drove um, the bullish run further. Um, we then ran into some significant um, support and resistance across a number of major and minor charts, um, which led to a retracement. Um, before we look at those charts, however, let's have a look at the, the news in question. Um, before we got on to the US news, we had the UK news. We had average uh, hourly earnings um, coming in at 2.6 against a forecast of 2.8, so slightly disappointing, but um, a strong claimant count uh, at minus 42,000 as opposed to uh, 1.1 thousand positive. Um, we saw uh, that actually the net result of that immediately was a negative um, move on the pound. Um, that was so subsequently um, reversed by the weakening in the dollar later on in the day. This is the data that I was mentioned about on the state. We've got manufacturing sales, CPI, core CPI. Um, sorry, not manufacturing sales, that's Canada. We've got CPI, core CPI, core retail and retail sales all significantly ahead of forecast. As I said, that gave us an immediate uh, kick to the bull run on the dollar, um, but subsequently, potentially due to maybe um, Fed Chair Yellen's testimony in the afternoon, we saw significant levels hit and a retracement on the dollar, which was mimicked across all the other major and minor moves. We also saw crude oil inventories coming in um, at 9.5 million ahead of the forecast 3.7 million. Going forward, uh, last night we had employment change and unemployment change coming in positive on the Aussie dollar. The dollar weakness had shown, um, had already given the um, Aussie dollar some strength. Um, that clearly will have done nothing to weaken that strength. And when we look at the charts, we'll see that the dollar hasn't yet um, gone back into um, a bullish phase. Uh, to look forward today, we've got US burn, um, building permits, Philly Fed manufacturing index and unemployment claims, and then this evening retail signs on the Kiwi, retail sales on the Kiwi even. Um, here we are, here's the dollar index chart. Mark talked yesterday about these markets having um, come out of a falling wedge in this instance. We were uh, then had this bullish move through here above this trend line. Um, we hit level here, um, which isn't so significant on the dollar index, but when you see it on, um, particularly on the euro, a very key level, um, we hit that price reversed. And now we've actually got a break this morning below this trend line. Um, the interesting factor here was, if you remember, we talked about watching out for a head and shoulders in this market and related markets, well, we've now got a left uh, shoulder, a head, and potentially a right shoulder. Even though we were looking through at this level at 102.70 area um, for the shoulder to match perfectly with um, this, the left-hand shoulder there, that didn't happen, um, but we are now on the break of this trend line, got the potential for this um, head and shoulders to play out which would show us considerably more dollar sound, uh, downside if that was to occur. It's too early to say that, of course, because um, this is the daily chart um, and that bar really is only just um, started for the day. Over on the yen, we can see exactly the same. We've got a breakout from this falling wedge, a less distinct trend, uh, trend line there. But again, we've got a, uh, up to a key level here and then we've got a break to the downside that's currently breaking that trend line. So correlating perfectly with the euro, sorry, with the um, dollar index. Um, but we can, and with, this is the euro, and we can see exactly the same here in that we've got this time, we've got the rising wedge, we've got the break to the downside, is which is probability wise what we would expect. Um, we had a uh, move down to a key level here. We were short the euro at this point. Um, we got out of this trade at virtually bang on. That was a really lovely level. We were within about three or four pips of the bottom of this move. 
Um, so that was uh, a nice result there. Um, we now have the same picture potentially here in the left hand shoulder, head, and now right hand shoulder of what would be um, a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern um, on the euro for a return to the upside on the euro. As I said, it's too early to say whether that will play out. And we won't actually be certain it's going to play out until we, we get a break um, below, or sorry, above this level here at about um, 108-200 there. But again, you can see we've got a strong move now, a strong rejection of this level and a break through this trend line. Um, so although we retain a dollar strength bias, um, we are now a little bit more cautious in that respect. One other market that I wanted to show you this morning, Mark talked about this yesterday. Um, this is the weekly chart for Coco uh, down at around 1900 down here. We've got a key level. Um, we had a commitment of traders signal. We've been waiting for this for a while. And hey, presto, um, we had uh, yesterday, so the day before yesterday, we had an inverted hammer. And then through yesterday, we had this really bullish bar clearly benefiting from a weakening on the dollar, bearing in mind that when we see um, dollar weakness, we will see um, commodities strengthening simply because they're priced in dollars and vice versa. So if you're long commodities, if you've got um, the dollar coming short, um, that is going to um, exasperate that move and the move potentially will be stronger and vice versa if you've got um, dollar strength, then that can restrict and cap commodities to the long side simply because of the dollar valuation. So you can see we've got a break above this inverted hammer here, uh, entry above that to the long side. Now we are, or we would have been, we've been watching this market since the beginning of January. Last January, we took a, a very nice trade um, which um, if I um, write it through here for that move through there, which was quite a nice move. If that move had come through again the beginning of January, we would be looking at quite a big move here. But the seasonality um, would suggest or the seasonality probability shows that the upside on this market could possibly only be until around the end of the month based on that seasonality. That's not to say that it is but we will have relatively modest first targets on that basis um, and wait to see if we get a break above that level and this move continues um, differently from how the 20-year uh, seasonality pattern plays out. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Uh, boot camp today, so a bit shorter than sometimes. Um, thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, please email us. Um, other than that, have a great day's trading and we'll speak to you again tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye.